to the cloud. Yes. Okay, guys, I'm so excited for this topic. I came up with this just like thinking of my own story um, and like really when did my business like blow up? Like when did things change for me? Was it a certain thing I did? Was it like a mindset shift? And really, I think it was a combination of both. So I am going to take you back to that time in my business um, and just share like a little story. So you guys know I like started out my business and I was working to be a full-time coach for like, I think a year and a half was like the time up until I became full-time, quit my job. Um, and I was still yoga teaching like alongside of it, but like it wasn't like the pressure to yoga teach in order to earn an income. It was like, I'm putting all the pressure on coaching, all the pressure on that being my full-time thing. Um, and at first, like that was supposed to be the high of my whole career. Like that was supposed to be the moment that I like worked for and you know, everything was like leading up to this moment. Like that was my big goal and as exciting and like amazing and awesome as it was, it was also so, so, so like difficult. And one of those times in your business where you're like, what the heck? Like, this is so hard. It was like one of the hardest seasons because really like that's when ish got real. <laughs> um, that's when I had to figure out like, oh my gosh, like I'm actually the CEO of my own business. Like if I don't go to work today or if I decide to go to work today or like whatever I do is literally the return I'm going to get on today. Like I can't blame it on my boss. I can't blame it on like the customers who are really, really rude to me at the coffee shop for the day. So like, it was kind of like scary. It was like this huge step. So I know like a lot of you guys want to go full time. Um, and even if you don't, even if that's not your goal, like this is still something you have to realize and will be really helpful for you to learn with coaching. Um, and maybe like some of you, I know like Kelsey's kind of already full time. I mean, momming is a huge job, but still like alongside of that, you have coaching as your old, like your other job. Um, so it's like this big thing because you've got all of this freedom. You've got all of this time. It's like so crazy awesome. But at the same time, like it's all up to you. It all lands on you. And like the good, the bad, and the ugly is like all of you. That's like a lot on your shoulder, on your shoulder, shoulders, shoulders. You're like at this point in your business or you're about to be, or you want to be one book. I just want to recommend first before I dive into more is being boss. Um, there's also a podcast. It's these two ladies, they work together and they basically teach you how to be your own boss and be an entrepreneur. And it's so helpful. It's so tangible. They kind of lay out like how you need to assess, you know, your financial situation, how you need to assess your time situation. Like they give you a lot of tangible tools. So I'm going to write that in our thing. Look up, um, being boss. Oh no. Okay. I can't read the comments. I get so distracted. But anyway, so this season, like I was like a year and a half in or a year and a few months into coaching. And I was like, you know what? I'm quitting my job. The financials weren't there. Like it was like, I needed like $200 more or $300 more each month to be able to like fully replace my income with um, coaching. And so I was a little bit under, but I was like, Chad, you know what? Like this job is killing me. It's sucking the life out of me. Like the people I work with are really hard. Can I just quit? And like, I'll work my butt off and make up, you know, the extra money that I'm missing out on. And so that's what we did. Like, I think it was May. We ended up, I quit my job and I was like, I'm going to make these extra two, $300 in commissions. Um, because that's the one thing I can be in control of. The one thing I can plan for, you know, signing up extra people to earn extra money. And really that's like what leads me to this number one thing that is like huge, 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 huge for your business. Like the number one thing for exponential growth in your business. And you guys have all heard me say it before it's numbers. Like it really does come down to numbers. Um, but I'm going to dive into this. So whether you're excited about that or upset about that, we're going to learn more about it and we're going to talk about it. Um, so like really, this is when I started upping the ante because I had to, like my back was against the wall. And so not only, you know, were numbers important to me from the day I signed up as a coach because I wanted to hit success club and I wanted to get my shakes paid for. But now it was a matter of like, I need to earn this income so that I can survive. And so that Chad and I can make our budget every month and like live and pay for groceries and all that kind of stuff. And so that's when I started up in the Annie and I like started making a goal for myself to hit SE 10 or higher every month. And there had been months beforehand where I hit SE 10 
Um, there was a month, I think right before our wedding where I hit SC 16, I was like a brand new coach. I was like, what the heck is happening? But like, you know how weddings and fun life events, they kind of blow up your social media. So I was like, this is the goal though. Every month SC 10 non-negotiable, like that's where we're going. And you know, if I get more than that, awesome. So that what ended up happening to my business, like, guess what happened to my business? It blew up. Like it literally went crazy. And that's when everything in my business started to change. It was like the compound effect was like this. And then all of a sudden it was like this and like going, you know, just massive explosion. So that was really exciting. Um, and with that, I want you guys to ask yourself a question or maybe just think about this. Like I want you guys to challenge yourself. What would upping the ante, what would that look like for you? Like in your life circumstances right now, taking everything that you're doing just to the next level, like what would that look like for you? Um, you know, maybe it looks like upping your success club numbers. Maybe it looks like upping your conversations, upping your reach outs. I don't know, upping your income, whatever kind of goal you want to focus on. But regardless of your goal, I think the really cool thing about numbers and the fact that like this business really does rely on numbers is whether your main focus is changing lives, whether your main focus is like paying it forward or whether it's, you know, quitting your job and paying for your whatever student loans like income focus whatever it is numbers like it responds to both numbers is correlating to both because when you have higher numbers you're going to earn more income but you're also helping more people um and like you know i i've been there in my business where i was helping a certain amount of people and then i kind of upped the ante and i was a little bit worried like am i going to be able to give all these people my sorry, there's so many motorcycles. Am I going to be able to give all these people my attention? Like, am I going to quality help these people? And I want you guys to like, give yourself some confidence, you know, take away the self-limiting beliefs because if you can help three people in a month, like you can help four. If you can help five people in a month, you can help six. Like upping the ante is not something that's meant to like overwhelm you or put you in this mindset or this state of like not being able to help people in a good way well, you know, in a good way, because I've been in those places in my business where I'm helping so many people or it's like, oh my gosh, this is like overwhelming. This is a lot of people. So I want you guys to just like believe in yourselves, like have confidence that like when you up the ante, cause y'all need to, it like, you will be able to handle it. You will be able to manage that. Um, and yeah. So like you can do it. So if you're getting a little overwhelmed by me saying this, just let that stay to the side. That's your inner mean girl because you can do it. I believe you can because if I can do it, you guys can do it. So anyways, bigger numbers is awesome because it relates to both whatever your goals are, like what I was saying. Um, so not only, like I said before, does this mean more success club points, but this can look like more invites, more messages, more conversations in general. Um, and in the 10X rule was a book I read right during the season of my coaching career. So if you've read that, you probably know kind of what I'm talking about, but what's cool, like in the 10 X rule, he basically says, you know, if you want your business to blow up, you need to 10 X your efforts with everything. But I want you guys to think like not necessarily 10 X, but what would it look like to just like turn the dial up just a little bit, you know, and feel free. If that looks like 10 X in your business, then yeah, 10 X it. But like for maybe for one of you, for some of you, it looks like instead of hitting success club five every month, you're going to hit success club eight or you're going to hit success club 10, you know, like just turn the dial up a little bit, like three exit. Um, but if you're like, okay, let's go level up. Like I want my business to level up then yeah, you should probably 10 exit. Um, so that can be like, you know, according to you and your goals and depending on whatever you want to go for. Um, and I also want you guys to remember while I'm talking about this, so like perfection is never possible. And I know a lot of us are perfectionists. I was, I think I'm like a recovering perfectionist at this point in life. Um, Chad's definitely a perfectionist recovering, but it's not possible. And so I know sometimes like when you add more to your list of things to do, when you add more conversations, when you add more people to talk to, more people to sign up, it can be like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a mess. Like, oh my gosh, my streak is not organized perfectly. And more people just means more people that are going to be imperfectly measured or tracked in my whole system. And that's okay. 
because this business and like our lives and our being and everything, it's not meant to be about perfection. It's meant to be about progress and challenging ourselves. You know, like if we're sitting at a spot in our business where we're just kind of on autopilot and we're just going through the motions, that's not good. Like that is not where we want to be. We want to be constantly leveling up and challenging ourselves, not to like overwhelm ourselves, but in in an intention to grow ourselves, right? And like push ourselves to the next level. Like I have learned with marriage counseling and just like counseling in general, I love being constantly in counseling, like talking to a third party about my life because they've kind of turned into my coach for my marriage and my life because they're constantly challenging me to level up. They're constantly calling me out on all my shit and like forcing me to be better, do better. And you know, it's, it's, in the moment, it can be a little hurt, like hurtful on your pride and harmful. Like you're like, Ooh, that like kind of hurt. But like the next day you're like, Oh my gosh, like that was awesome. I'm so glad that, you know, that person told me that. And so that's the same thing that's happening with our businesses here because the reality is, is we are the CEO of our own business. We are in charge of our own businesses. And so if you can constantly be pushing yourself to up the ante and level up every single month or like every season, if you want to take it like at a season at a time, then your business is just going to grow and grow and grow. Like that is the best thing for you. So I know like this can be hard to hear for some people and it can be like the best thing in the world to hear for other people. So regardless of where you are, just know like all in all, you know, it's like the marriage counseling session metaphor, like it's good for you. Um, and your benefit is going to grow from it. But like, so are you because you're leveling up your business, you're leveling up yourself, right? You're like setting your ego to the side and just like doing more, helping more people. Um, so just three things. Oh, lastly, I just wanted to say like on that note of perfectionism, like if you think about it, isn't messy worth more lives being changed? Like if my business can't be perfect, if my whole tracking method can't be perfect, if that like overwhelms me by helping more people, I think it's so much more worth it to be messy and like show up anyways and help more lives than hit success club five every single month and like just, you know, have it all perfect and neat and tied in a bow. Like, I think it's just more worth it to help more people if you're kind of leveling up and like challenging yourself and going a little crazy in the midst of it all. Um, so three more things I just wanted to share with you guys about like, what does more numbers truly mean for me and my business? Cause we've kind of, I've kind of like given you guys this overview of what that looks like. Um, so number one, Think about like, if you level up your business, if you, you know, up the ante just a little bit, turn up the dial, this is going to mean more momentum for you and your team. So like whether you're a brand new coach, you don't really have a big team yet, or maybe you have a coach like your husband or your significant other is the other person on your team. Um, this is creating momentum for you, like your business, because when you hit success club, you're getting more people signed up. And like when other people see that on you know, in the team pages, on the success club boards, or even on social media, they're going to be like, wait, like I missed out on that. And like five girls got signed up, you know, her list was full instead of just like three girls. I want to be on that list. Like more people just build more momentum. Um, and then also think of it from like perspective of the coaches underneath you like your coaches seeing you hitting higher numbers, they're going to be like, wait, if she can hit a success club 10, then I can hit a success club five. Right. Cause like our coaches always think that they can do half usually of what we can do. If not, you know, if they're really big believers, they hopefully think they can do exactly what we can do. You know, like when I first started out, I saw like Carly hitting SC 20. I was like, okay, I can hit SC 10. So just think about like, what is, Oh, these are good jams. <laughs> what are you paving for like your coaches on your own team? What are you setting up for them? Like as the blueprint for that, for their business, you know, because you're the one paving the way you're the leader, you need to lead by example. So if you want them to hit success club, like maybe that's, you know, motivation enough for you to up the ante and turn it up a little bit. Um, so number two, and this was like my favorite thing that happened so when I was full time, you know, it really hit me. I was like, holy crap, like everything rests on my shoulders. If I'm not showing up every single day, if I'm not 
doing my workout, doing all the things. If I'm, if I didn't go to bed feeling fulfilled, like I got at least, you know, some work done and like impacted some lives, maybe changed some lives, hit success club, whatever. Um, then like, I don't feel, I don't even know where I was going with that. My, my train of thought just dropped. It just everyone derailed. Um, okay. Anyways, I'm starting over. My favorite thing about this point is that it creates more sustainability in your business and less anxiety. So like, you know, when you're your own CEO, when you're in charge of your own business, you don't want to go to bed feeling unfulfilled or feeling like you did a bad job or feeling like you didn't give it all that you've got every single day. Um, and even when you're working to go full time, you know, I, I encourage you to work with the mindset of that you already are full time, right? Like that's, um, that's a mindset in and of itself where you can just like level up. Um, so when I was full time, you know, I'm trying to earn a little bit of extra income here and I'm a little stressed out all the time because that's like a huge weight on our shoulders. I think, especially as like entrepreneurs, but especially as just like adults, it's just like scary and hard, right? Like entering into this adult world and having to earn all the money by ourselves or whatever with your partner, whatever. Um, and so for me, it was always like, how can I get my business to a point where I have less anxiety, where I have less worry every single day and where I feel good about what I did and where I showed up and true sustainability so that I don't have to like feel like, okay, I'm waking up in the morning tomorrow and everybody's going to quit on me or like everybody's going to fall off. And part of that comes from just confidence and like the work that you're doing and that you're giving your best effort. But part of that is like when you up your numbers and up the ante and up everything in your business with conversations, you're going to feel more confident because just an example here, like if I hit SC10 in my business, I got five people signed up with a challenge pack and started on their health journey. Amazing. I, you know, have five people, but the odds are that like maybe probably two of those people are going to cancel after the 30 days or even before the 30 days. And then maybe one of them will stay on as a discount member. And maybe one of them will kind of like flip flop, go in and active and you know, in between things. And maybe one of them will like run with it and she'll be like, okay, I want to work the business. I want to do this alongside of you. So like the odds there, it's like you have three people that might stay. And so, you know, if you challenge yourself to just add on one more person every month or two more people every month, that those could be people that stay or they could be people that quit. But like all in all, you're giving yourself better odds every single month. You're giving yourself more, um, structure and sustainability in your business. And then when you have those three people that cancel on you or two people that cancel on you every month, you don't have to sweat it. You can be like, it's so much easier to say to people like, I totally understand where you're at. I have been there. It's totally easy to say like with grace and love and leave somebody and let them go or redirect them to whatever that that's going to be better for them than necessarily staying on your team or staying on with the membership or whatever it is. Um, it's just easier to like let those people go because you're like, you know what, like out of these six people, seven people I got this month, like four of them are staying and that's awesome. So that's just like a huge thing because for a long time I had so much fear of like losing people or losing rank or dropping, um, people, whatever, you know? So if that's kind of where you are, like really, really, really encourage you to up the numbers, up the ante, up the messages, because like, you don't have to worry about that anymore. And as you are building the compound effect with those higher numbers every month, like let's say SC five compared to SC six or let's say five people compared to three people every month, just two more people per month. Like that is going to compound like, you know, in month one, you sign up three people, but if you decided to sign up five people after 12 months, like that's a huge difference in people. You know what I mean? Like, um, so anyways, that kind of leads to my next point. Um, destruction of self-limiting beliefs. This is also pretty huge because I just feel like, okay, so I was like, it was July and I was like, you know, changing my mindset, 10 xing everything in my business, hitting higher numbers, making better financial goals and hitting those financial goals, making ends meet. It felt like really awesome and empowering. And 
that is the thing. Like I started to step into this power as a leader. I started to step into this power as just like a coach, as you know, all the things like the wife, like role in my life, all the different roles in my life. I like felt like so much more confidence because I was like finally owning my business. Um, and really that seriously came from hitting higher numbers. Like I think attention and energy can be sent to those who stay. Wait, what is this saying? Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Attention and energy can be sent to those who stay and believe in this. Um, not in worry. Oh my gosh, that was totally on my last point. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, so <laughs> going back to what I was originally saying, when it was July, I set a goal for myself that I wanted to get our team to 100 people. I wanted to like just hit that mark because it was going to feel good to get 100 people on the team. Like It was going to help me build confidence, whatever. And so I was like, I'm going to sign up or I'm going to get 10 coaches. I think my goal was 10 coaches every single month. Um, and what was really interesting is some months I would sign up 15 coaches and some months I would sign up like eight coaches. And so like, I wasn't perfect every single month going back to that perfectionism thing. But what happened is it all ended up kind of like evening out. And by the end of the year, we did get to our goal of having a team of a hundred people. And that was so, so huge. And like going back to my original point, that gave me so much confidence in like setting a goal and like hitting the goal with the numbers, with the amount of people on my team, with knowing that like I impacted and helped either start somebody's health journey or actually like start and continue somebody's health journey. But like with a hundred people, like that's such a huge thing. Um, and so, you know, if you're struggling maybe in your business with like self-limiting beliefs or you don't feel like you're the coach you want to be, or maybe you don't feel like you're the wife or the husband, like whatever, you, you know, whoever you are, if you don't feel like enough, I honestly challenge you to hit higher numbers and like 10 X your business, turn it up a little bit because it's going to give you this confidence once you step into that power. And once you start hitting those goals that you, you can do this, you're like, Oh my gosh, who, who was that last month? Like she just hit SC 10. She hit her goal. Like it's super empowering. Um, and I mean, of course you'll see your name on the recognition boards and all that fun stuff, but like really, truly deep down, it just feels good to like hit a goal and well, you start to believe in yourself and believe that you can actually do this. Um, and I think it also goes to like setting these loftier goals. Like when you're upping the ante, when you're 10 xing everything, you're setting goals far beyond what you thought you could do, right? Like you, you set a goal of SE5 because that's what they tell you to do in Beachbody, not because that's what you think you can do. So like, what do you actually think you could do? What do you act like? How many people do you actually think you could help in a month? You know, like, are you going on autopilot every month or are you, are you setting a goal to like actually impact and change, you know, as many lives as you would actually want to change every single month? Um, are you working until you hit that goal? Are you working until you have, you know, outworked yourself until like, I remember people used to tell me, yeah, my goal is 10 reach outs, 10 invites every single day or 30 reach outs, 30 invites, like whatever the number was crazy high or crazy low. And I would just say, oh, like my goal is to just get 10 people signed up this month and whatever, however many conversations, whether it's invites, reach outs, follow-ups, however many it takes to get to that goal of 10 people signed up, like share cart filled out. They're in my group. I've emailed them. We're texting, we're building relationship. Like that is the goal, right? Like keep it focused on those lives that you're actually changing and that actually impacting, um, because I think sometimes, honestly, we get focused on the wrong numbers. Like we get focused on the Instagram followers, the, the likes on our photo, you know, and just a month ago I realized, oh my gosh, I don't even give a crap if I have one like on my photo or 300 likes. Like it really doesn't matter to me because my main goal is getting people signed up because that's when I know that I'm actually empowering them to live a healthier, happier life. Not to say that you aren't impacting or empowering people when they like your photo, like that's awesome, but that's going to happen naturally. You know, like our job as coaches is to help them um, get started on a health and fitness journey. And so like really start focusing on the numbers that actually matter, which is like signing people up, getting them started, getting them in the door, building a relationship with them. Because I truly think like it's, 
like all the things I've said, it's not only going to build momentum for your team, it's going to give you sustainability, less anxiety, less of like this fear mindset, this lack mindset. It's going to bring abundance to everything because you're just doing more. You're stepping into your power and you're, you're going to feel more confident about all of that. And you're going to look back, like I said, and be like, who the heck was that girl? She just like stepped up her game. Um, and you'll be empowering everyone else around you to do the same too, right? So I think that's all I got. I know that was like so all over the place and kind of all over the place tonight. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them or comment below. I'm going to like look over my notes because they're kind of messy <laughs> as I was talking like from one subject to another, back to another. I don't remember what my little thing was that I started saying. All right, now you can tell her. Hi, Summer. Oh. Hi, Ryder. Why don't you do this in person? In person, I feel like he's afraid of me. He said hi, Leanna, about a hundred times. He just keeps saying, hi, Leanna. She's down there. He said it better than, like, last time. Last time, I was like, a Lehana. You say hi, Leanna. Hi, Hi, Ryder. Yeah. Hold on, I'm muting myself. Hold up. Wait, Hold Nadia up. said something? So I sent somebody a share cart just now, but after I sent it, she said she wants the vegan. So can I send her a new share cart? Okay, cool. Awesome. I just want to make sure I could use the same email address and stuff. So Don't get them, girl. That is, <laughs> I was at Success Club 2, and I just hit Success Club 6 because <gasps> I I, I got lucky because Charlotte was sick and watching movies, so I was just sitting there on my phone. I was like, the parents won't care. <laughs> but if they have cameras... Make it happen. I'm so worried. Like, what if they have cameras or some crazy stuff and they watched no. me? Also, like, I've sent people... I've, I've resent share cards to the same people, like, 12 times. Because I'll be like, I'll go to do it, and then, like, they'll want something changed, and I'm like, okay, I send it again, or they want something different or whatever. So, like... I probably, like I sent, I think, I can't remember who it was. I sent one person like a same share cart six times and it's like, it doesn't give me any warnings or anything. So I think you can do that until they finalize it. Okay, guys, I just remembered my point that I like, I started saying, and then I was like totally off my topic. Um, so when you are upping your numbers, here's just one little last thing. So people are gonna cancel, people drop off all the time. And that's really discouraging, not only like for what it causes to happen in our business, like whether it's causing us to drop rank or whatever, but it's discouraging to like lose people because we're like, no, I wanted to help you. Like, I want this to work for you. Right. And so one thing I want you to think about is like when you, you know, are upping your numbers and helping more people, whether or not it's causing, you know, more people to come in and then cancel your think of your energy, like you're able to take all of your energy and send it forth into the people that are there and that are going to stay with you and that like believe in what you're doing and believe in the products and believe in like true health, you know, like little by little. And, um, those people are worth pouring your energy into. So I think when we have, um, like when I was hitting success club six, at least compared to like 10, I was always focused on the people that quit and always focused on the people I lost rather than, you know, pouring that attention and energy into the people that were there and staying with me and really showing up. So that's just like another little side note. Sorry to break this party. <laughs> And I think another thing that has really helped me just about what you were saying, Megan, um, lately, it's good to just like be in expectation or be aware that like they might not stay with you. But also at the same time, I would say when you're in conversation with them and talking to them, it, like kind of expect them to stay in conversations because um, that's kind of been my, I think I just realized it. Like I didn't know I made that shift in my conversations and it was just like a natural like. I, it was like this mindset shift of people stay or like, I, 
I bring in people that want to stay on board or those are the types of people that I want to work with, not the girls who are just going to sign up and cancel. And I, for some reason, I feel like that's been happening more so in my business, at least the past three months than ever before. Like people are signing up and like wanting to stay and like able to stay with Shakeology or, you know, some product and just keep ordering it and keep like pouring into themselves and like stay in the group and keep pouring into the group. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's a hard balance because you don't want to come into things with a total negative mindset, but you want to be aware and in expectation that they might cancel like that. That's totally going to happen. Um, but like when you're talking to them and when you're engaging, you know, be like, you know, next month, what's your program going to be? Or yeah, like, you know, talk about the discount membership or talk about coaching, you know, after you've done three programs, maybe you should start coaching. Or I think that you'd be really good after you solidify this routine for yourself or sustain, you know, the habits of a healthier lifestyle. Um, that's been helping. The two people that I signed up, like were pretty, were pretty clear on it that like, like they weren't interested or whatever in like the coaching aspect of it. Um, they love the idea of the discount, which is great, which is why I set them up as a coach. Thanks to Heather's advice and the way that she um, words it, it really helps. Um, and then what I do is I just like, I don't, I don't have this like predetermined expectation that like these girls are going to stick with me till the end. And they're going to be like, they're going to grow my business. I keep the expectation that they're going to take the program seriously. And I still pour everything into them and making sure that they're motivated and they have the tools that they need in hopes that by doing that, I get them in love with it in the process. And then by the time MM100 is over, that's almost three months, right? MM100 is a big program. So I'm hoping that with that, and while I'm doing MM100, I'm going to start promoting the next program I'm going to do whilst we're in the middle of it. And I'm hoping that that's going to be enough to kind of keep them like obsessed with it and want to stick on with that coach discount. So I know that there's a huge part of it where it's like a lot of people are really skeptical until they try it. And then once they're in, they're just like, holy shit, this is awesome. And I love this. Right. So it's, uh, it's nice to, to kind of like work with people that way and get them to fall in love with it without having to be like, Hey, so you should join as coach. You should do this. You should do that. Right. It's been, it's been working for me so far. And I hope that once I get girls on who I can tell are really serious about wanting to take this as a business, then I can, I can pour a lot more into them as a coach. Yeah. To find like whatever works for you and just like get their toes in or, you know, like dip their toes in. And, um, I feel like that's such a huge thing. I've even been like playing into that lately with girls who are a little bit hesitant, um, with like continuing Shakeology. I'm like, well, why don't you like try it for a month? Like, let's see. And then we'll decide moving forward. Um, one other thing I just wanted to share with you guys, cause we're on the topic of this. Uh, it has been working for my business so well lately and it was just a minor shift. But so normally girls will either cancel and not tell me or they will come to me first and like send me a message and say, Hey Leanna, like I'm thinking about canceling. Can you help me do that? Kind of direct me through it or guide me. Um, and so I created this little like can pre cancellation email and it's basically saying like, all the different options moving forward. And it says, you know, number one, you can move forward with ordering a product and remain in my challenge tracker app. And that's where, you know, I pour most of my love and energy. And I really highlighted the fact that like in that option, you are able to order even vitamins, you know, and still be a part of the VIP discount membership thing still have that membership and that it's still worth it. Cause the vitamins I think are like $12. I like ordered them for a while when I was trying to maintain two accounts. Um, so I think like I used to be in this mindset, you know, it's like all or nothing. Like you have to continue ordering Shakeology or nothing. And now I'm like, no, like, let's just like keep you going. If you can only order vitamins, but keep the discount membership, that's probably going to be like 20 to 30 bucks a month awesome. Like, let's do it because the vitamins are helping you. That's still nutrients. And like the group is going to help you more than anything. So I'm really trying to get people to like stick with their VIP membership, no matter what it takes. And then if that's not an option, then I say, Hey, I have this, you know, ongoing Facebook group with more support. I'm not in there all the time, but I'm in there at least like twice, three times a week. Um, and then third option, I bring up coaching and say a little bit about my story. And that when I first started, I really only started as a discount membership. And if you want to pay for your investment in health, I think, you know, it's something to 
budget for and put in your budget is health. You know, like we have a budget for groceries. Why don't we have a budget for like making sure our groceries and our lives are healthy, you know, like going to keep us living long. Um, and like starting to coach, even if that's just having a goal of signing up one person per month, like that can still be super helpful for you, you know, cause then it's like Shaco's not going to be a hundred whatever 30 or discounted at 113 but it's you know it's going to have like a little bit cut off of it because you got one person signed up um so really just kind of being in the trenches with them when they're about to cancel or like looking into their next steps and like giving them so many different options i feel like for a while i was just kind of like yeah whatever you do is fine i'll just keep like doing my thing you keep doing your thing so yeah, I don't know if that helps you guys, but it's been huge for me just like giving them all the different options and really showing them that like I care about how they're going to move forward with this. I started to do that too, like with a lot of the products because like I don't think people really realize it, like all the different things that there are. It's not just like it's not just a protein shake, but it's literally like there's a whole lineup of like apparel and clothing and like equipment that people can purchase as well. So it's so much more than just, just workouts. And I think that's like a huge thing too. And it's like, especially like with my family, Carly, Carly is called, she did a couple weeks ago where she's like, you know, if I opened a restaurant, would you come and shop there? If I did this, would you, would you buy my products kind of thing? And it was like, that was when I kind of started branding a lot of the other things that, that we offer as well, like way more over and above that. Plus like the training and these calls and, things like that. And it's just like, the more I talk about like the ongoing support, I feel like when I talk about, sorry, bugs, when I talk about like the support system that comes along with this and all the amazing people that I've met in a month and a half, like I never met her until today. She just showed up at my house. Just kidding. I invited her, but like, these are people (laughs) that we can, these are people that we can like be friends with and, and, you know, have a good rapport with for the rest of our lives. If we want to, especially as women, it's really hard to make like good quality relationships and friends with like, like like-minded things. And so it's like being able to come in here. It's not just a workout program. Like I consider every single person on this call, one of my friends, I talked to, I've talked to all of you like one-on-one except for maybe like Nadia, cause you're so new, but like, I think all of you are like so awesome. So it's like, that's a huge part of it too, that I bring into the conversation. I talk about that constantly because I've never experienced a system, like a a group like this before. And it's like, these are people that are literally just going to like come in and literally support every single thing that you do, unless you're like, I don't know, doing something inappropriate, I guess, (laughs) but we're going to support you no matter what. If you had bad days, we're going to be there for you. If we notice you're not in the group, someone's going to check on you because people are actually watching for that. And so that's been a huge part of what I've been promoting as well. And I just feel like, um, to kind of answer Caitlin, your question like Shakeology is the best, like it is the most important, but a lot of people don't believe that. And a lot of people, even after using it for 30 days, won't like hop on board with that financially. And so I think it's more important to get them in the door and keep them in the store or whatever, you know, however you want to use the metaphor, like keep them on your team, in your group or whatever, so that the, like the love of it builds. Um, because for some people it takes a month to like fall in love. For me, it took like a month. I was like, I'm sold. I will order Shakeology for the rest of my life. Um, but anybody like sometimes, you know, I have people where they are like, I don't know, I'm like not feeling a difference. And so like, I think it's just important to like keep them in that door and keep loving on them, keep sharing the other options, the other products, keep sharing the team atmosphere because it's so, it can be so, you know, life-changing and transformational. And I think there's also a lot of coach stories out there where it's like, you know, if my coach didn't give up on me or if she gave up on me, I would never be here. And so we have to think about those people that like, need a little bit more time and need a little bit more coddling and loving on and just like create a space for them to, um, yeah, but obviously pushing everybody to get on Shakeology if possible or, and like create those different options for them. Yeah. Create that safe space. Okay. Yeah, guys. So many people that like haven't wanted to continue with Shakeology and I just don't toss them aside, you know, like I continue loving on them and whether they cancel completely or not, they're going to feel better if they continue getting their workouts in and that then creates that ripple effect that goes to someone else and maybe they tell their friend and they're happy with what's going on and it creates this huge big thing and like one in three people I would say every month does cancel and does fall off and that's totally normal and that's why 
um, you have where they go and active and you have that little bit of time to replace them and find someone else and find your people. But um, yeah, I just feel like you should never give up on anyone and never like push them aside because some people will fall in love with it. Some people will come back. Some people will order something later. Some people will stay inactive for a bit and then jump on another program. Like that happened to me with MM100. And if I would have just been like, oh, well, sorry, you didn't order Shakeology. So now I have to go find someone else and, and you're gone, then that would have never happened. Right. So um, it definitely is the most amazing thing ever. Like Shakeology is everything, but like, there's going to be a lot of people that don't find that. And then like, there's going to be the most unlikely people that you think might like I thought that one girl there was no way she'd be able to afford it um and that was terrible of me to think but like she has budgeted for it now and she's like I don't care what I'm gonna do I'm always gonna have it and I was like heck yeah girl you know like so it's not putting those limitations on yourself or other people and um yeah just I don't know that ripple effect creating that ripple effect in the world I feel like always will pay off you know yeah, not putting the limiting belief on other people is so huge because it's like, I know when I first signed up for Shaco, it was so expensive for me. And so I always expected it to be expensive for everyone else. But now it's like such a huge part of my life that I don't expect it to be, you know, not a part of someone else's life because it's so normal for me. So we kind of have to watch like what we're putting on other people, even, you know, like leave room to, that it could be whatever for them. You know, it could go one way or another. Um, but I have to hop off and get back in the car, guys. So I love you all. Quick grab a selfie if you haven't yet. So oh, good. I will see so many of you soon. Bye. Okay. I can just run bye. In seconds, so she wanted to say bye to everybody. And oh, then bye. One of you and survive. Bye. <laughs>